Good morning, England friends. Here's your friendly announcer. I've got some serious news to pass on to everybody. What I'm about to say could mean the world's disaster. It could turn your joy and laughter to tears and pain. It's that love, it's in me of love today. Don't delay, send yours in right away, hey, hey, because we need it. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family. Welcome, 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 welcome once again to The Mental House. I am your host, Khadija. Uh, some of y'all, can y'all see my t-shirt? Oh, I love it. This is Marcus Garvey, and uh, I love it. And uh, Marcus says, um, I try to bring dignity to our race. Africa for the Africans, at home and abroad. Moses, this is Marcus Garvey. For those of y'all who don't know, um, so... Just wanted you to see that. Hey, this this T-shirt also is available for purchase if you like it. Um, you can hit me up at the email. And in fact, I'm going to be having a few T-shirts out here. Um, positive statements, revolutionary statements, um, educational T-shirts, and I'd consider these education. And a lot of people don't know who our uh, 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 leaders are that have gone on before us and all of those who have fought and worked for the liberation of um, our people. I think they should be acknowledged as our heroes, just as George Washington and Abraham Lincoln and the rest of those f uh, founding fathers of this place called America are revered and worshiped. So if we don't honor our own, who uh, do we expect to honor us? Hmm? That's just a train of thought. Now, on to some universal information here. I really, really, um, this is really kind of difficult for me to talk about because there's so many of us out here now that are realizing just what it means to have been, um, I don't even want to say raised, um, who have been exposed to narcissism, uh, severe or mentally ill uh, parents, personality disorder parents and family members and we are just now realizing that we have been in some kind of hell some type of unspeakable bondage um, that um, a lot of people have been through but not a lot of people want to talk about let's just sum it up and say that so while a lot of us are in recovery there are still stories that pop up into our lives, uh, memories that pop up into our lives, uh, situations and things that pop up into our lives that allow us to know that or see just how deep this rabbit hole goes and just how um, maybe mistreated we were, um, how sick our parents were, relatives, you know, siblings, whoever. But at some point, we know that we have to do the work in order to get better because we can sit here and complain about these people and how sick they are and were uh, to the cows come home. And it's okay to acknowledge that and you can acknowledge that until you are blue in the face. And I re recommend that you do. But the yin and yang of it is just as you are, how should I say, recovering and going through the traumatic memories sometimes and the feelings that come along with it. 
you have to still look forward to the day and look for the solutions to those feelings. Because otherwise you're living the narcissist shame. Otherwise you're doing exactly what these people wanted to do to you. They wanted to ruin your life. They wanted to um, make a sick flunky, whether they think they did or not. Um, they wanted to control your life. They wanted you to be miserable because they were. And the sooner we realize that, then we know that it's even more important for us to not let the narcissist win. To not carry around the narcissist shame. Um, the abuser shame. Um, we have to expose the abuse. We have to um, take our responsibility, take, take up our responsibility in the abuse. And, or if we passed it on because of our learned behavior. Or if we uh, have set weak boundaries and continue to set, set weak boundaries. These are all the things that being in recovery uh, from uh, PTSD allows you to examine. I want to speak on something that I don't know if a lot of y'all had experiences with this. It just seems like most of the people I know that had narcissistic parents, especially a narcissistic mother, um, there's always this kind of sexual overtone around the life with them. Some kind of some kind of freaky, sadistic. It's hard to explain. Uh, infatuation with sex, um, exposure uh, to sex, uh, having inappropriate conversations with you about sex, or doing inappropriate things to you sexually. These are all seem to come out the trick bag of the narcissist. Now, especially when they're dealing with their children. I've read emails. Um, I've been sent emails from people who have told me that their mother um, had sex with them in the bed and then got mad. Uh, one girl said that the mom got mad because um, she was every bit of seven or eight. And the mom got mad because um, she woke she woke up during them having sex. Um, or young men telling me um, how their mother made them do, thing, do things to her inappropriately. Um, sometimes when you think that you're the only one going through something and you keep your secrets to yourself, you find out once you let that open up that Pandora's box, there's a lot of people and maybe who have suffered worse indig indignations than you have, experiences than you have. Um, and this is some of the um, stuff that I've been dealing with. Um, I had to think about in my own family of origin. I had a cousin who um, uh, already was not living uh, with her mom for whatever reason, and um, she stayed. They stayed with an aunt, and. My aunt, well, my aunt, my, 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 my aunt's brother is the father of the daughter in question. So my cousin went to go live with the aunt who is the brother of, I mean, whose brother is, is the girl's father. I hope I'm not so confusing this morning because the story makes me angry and when I think about it my heart bleeds to make a long story short um, the uncle went to go live with the aunt and um, he wasn't raised with his daughter but he knew it was his daughter um, and right in that house the father impregnated his daughter. And my aunt, God rest the dead, because both of them have passed on now. And uh, 
she allowed her brother to have, well, her brother had sex with his daughter and got her pregnant without any repercussions. And he took the girl to have an abortion and no one ever talked about it. It was as if, it was as if nothing happened. That's narcissism. And that poor child, my poor cousin, was made to carry that hurt, that shame, that, that abuse. And, you know, a lot of people will talk about my cousin had issues. Can you imagine why? And every time I think about it, I get very angry because we were children together. And something changed in my cousin. Something changed in her and she wasn't the same. And she wasn't the same because she was molested by her fucking dad. And made pregnant by her fucking dad. And the aunt who was a jury's responsibility to protect her kept quiet and made her have an abortion because she said I can't tell about my brother these are the kind of things that go on in narcissistic families these are the things these are, this, this is the hurt and shame that you have to fight through when you have been raised by people who are disordered. I don't even give a fuck about the labels that they put on you. Just crazy making people who set out purposely or unpurposely to make your life a living hell. Because I don't understand what type of person would allow somebody to be abused that way and it never have gone through therapy never was made to feel like you were worth even asking are you okay and you've been impregnated by your father I love my cousin and I love her to this day and she has a lot of challenges to this day. And a lot of people talk about my cousin as, you know, she's the one with the problems. Well, I contend that it was all the people around her who had the real problems and who didn't protect her. She's a beautiful lady with three beautiful children of her own who are since now adults and I pray pray to God that out of everything that has happened to her that she finds the courage and the strength to try to heal herself and break the cycle in her children's family I want y'all to excuse me because I'm a little hurt right now. I'm a little angry and a little hurt. Because it's the shit that we do to each other. It's fucked up. Okay? It is fucked up. So if anybody knows somebody that's going through something in their family right now. Your secrets keep you sick. And if you want to be well. You got to give it up. You got to give it up. <sighs> All right. I'm going to end it with this. Um, and um, if you like what you hear, please share, like, and subscribe. And uh, I'll be back. We'll talk later in the mental house. Bye-bye, y'all.